era. So how is it that you um, came to make this film? You're a first time direct feature director and uh, you kind of landed a big fish. How did it happen? Uh, <clears throat> well, I met David when he was 69 years old and he was in the midst of recording Cross, which was his first solo album in 20 years. He talks about, you know, those four solo albums, he's halfway through a fifth. And um, I come from a musical background. My dad's a songwriter and, and so I've lived a life of, you know, being around musicians and their ups and downs. And um, so my brother is this really great guitarist and he and Crosby met and they hit it off and he was working with Crosby on that on that album called Cross. So, um, does I sound, do I sound okay? Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> anyway, so I, um, I met Cross and I was totally surprised what I, what I saw when I met him because I didn't, I knew about his drug prop, you know, past and I knew about his, you know, I knew that he'd been in jail and I knew he had a liver transplant so I was kind of expecting someone who, I, I, I mean, when I met you know, he had all of his faculties, and he was making great jokes, and they were writing great music. It just totally surprised me, so I was, we became fast friends, because we, we could talk about music. And that's what he was interested in talking about when I met him, is he's interested in talking about, like, the new stuff that he was doing. But I could see that there was a window, you know, like a window. Some of the lyrics on some of these new songs and new albums that he was doing kind of talked about Christine, his girlfriend. And so I just kind of started thinking, like, someone should shoot footage of that. And I just I said, hey, David, we should shoot some footage of this for posterity. And he kind of agreed because he trusted me because I liked what he was doing musically. And then pretty soon I said, we got to do a movie. And then after a couple of years of, like, borrowing money to shoot, because he's, like, he's doing so much. He's going on tour, he's recording an album, and I felt like I'm, I'm going to take on this movie, I'm going to do it. But I felt like there was so much stuff that I couldn't afford not to shoot. But I also couldn't You're afford to shoot. You're a documentary filmmaker. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, and then finally I got to a point where I was, I was like just completely broke. And, 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 you know, going around town saying, you know, I'm going to do this movie about David Crosby. And, you know, I ran into, I mean, I've... The Hollywood stories are hilarious. You didn't just happen to run into Cameron Crowe by any chance. I did. Well, <laughs> I... After a couple of really weird meetings, and and basically, I ran into Cameron at, at um, what Tell we, them, I think most people here probably know who he is, but just in case. Well, Cameron's one of my filmmaking director heroes, and he's also, he comes to d directing via being a, uh, you know, a journalist at the age of 15, and his life is basically depicted in the movie he won an Oscar for, Almost Famous. Mm. And so he was this brilliant young, uh, I call it courageous, curious, uh, young young person, young man who was out on the road with Led Zeppelin and Crosby, Stills and Nash, and I knew about that story, and so when I saw him, I was like, "That's it." Well, what did you say to him? Well, Joe Mazursky, our executive producer, said, "Well, I, I was like that. He should he should do the Crosby movie. That's it, because we needed a producer. We needed this is a Herculean task. You know, you can't." do a movie about David Crosby on your own, you know, I mean, we have a team of archival researchers, we have a team of producers, you know, we have, and it's, it's, he's lived an epic life, so, um, and, you know, and also getting financing because we have, you know, hundreds of cues of music in there. Oh, yeah. And that, that is not for the faint of heart. No, not at all. <laughs> so, Cameron really, truly is the only person that could have made this movie that I could have made the movie with. He... He has an affinity for the, the time period. Uh, I have affinity for Crosby's later years when he, you know, the CPR and the new albums. And so the two of us kind of brought two perspectives together and we really worked harmoniously and spent a lot of time. But he, he said to you know, when I first met him, he said, well, why don't you let me do, let me do an interview? As, because he wasn't, he, at that point, he couldn't com uh, commit to being a producer because he was working on a TV series. And so... <coughs> And of course, I was like, yeah, you should. And so when the minute that, that Crosby and Cameron, ah. Hey, hi, everyone. Yeah. Um, so the minute uh, Crosby and Cameron uh, sat down together and they started talking, it was like a faster shortcut up to 
and they they were going places, the places that I was hoping that we could go. And and Cameron was able to ask him these like questions. And Crosby mm -hmm. didn't not answer any question that Cameron. And then you know pretty soon like Cameron and I are going like we should talk to him about this, and talk to him about that. And Cameron's like yeah yep. Yeah. And so systematically we we did a series of these interviews, and each interview got <laughs> more. Just, I mean, Crosby was ready to talk. He was ready to get some things off of his chest. And how, what were the ground rules? Did, did Crosby, did he get to say, I get final creative control, or editorial control, I get the final cut? What, what, what kind of ground rules did you have? No, that was one of the rules right off the, off the bat that we, Crosby could not be in control. I mean, it was a partnership and he trusted us. And he, and once, once I, I was able to court, you know, and convince Cameron to come and support and be part of this project and, you know, be that this is the first movie that he was the <coughs> producer and not also the director. And I also know that, you know, Crosby's music means so much and CSN and CSNY and the birds and his life means so much to so many people. I knew that I, I would get a little terrified. <laughs> so, um, uh, but the rule was that we we were making this film this film about him. It's going to be objective, and he would par cooperate with us. But he he was not able to come and look at shots and and footage. I showed him one clip. Only that one time at the market where he said, "I don't know what you're going to get here." <laughs> yeah. He was starting to direct. Yeah, you. yeah. Well, that was once we once we had done these really. I mean, these interviews were so captivating, and the the connection that. Crosby and Cameron have. I mean, Cros Crosby and I have an interesting connection because we can talk about music and geek out about that, but these two have been having this trusted dialogue for over 40 years. And then once we had those as kind of a foundation, I had already had amassed a, 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 a library of footage of him in the studio and on the road and all of that. And then we and then I said, we've got to get him out. We've got to get him out of that out there. And so that was the perfect opportunity to put cameras in the car when he was leaving on tour. And he wasn't excited about that. And he's definitely not excited about going to Laurel Canyon. And that was a day where it was rough for everyone. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> no cinematic value here at all. Yeah. This is terrible. <laughs> and Cro yeah, he and probably said more off camera than where he, we heard. Yeah, we, we had, that was a very hard day for all of us. It was 100 degrees outside and, and it was not easy. But what's crazy is that, and this is just, how Crosby is he's like a you know a paradoxical person he says this is terrible you're not going to get anything here at all there's no cinematic value here Cameron asked him a question in the in the store like what does this whole place represent and just where we got the damn groceries <laughs> you know? oh Morrison what a dork and then he sits out on the porch of the Laurel Canyon store and, and starts talking about Mama Cass and all the girls he hurts and that's like that's Crosby he just once he had his little fit then he goes deep, and we were, I mean, many times when we were shooting, I was like whispering to the camera crew, I hope we have enough memory cards, you know, enough film, yeah. because we, we might be, we're, we're, we're striking gold, we're hitting oil or whatever metaphor you want to use. So you must have tried for interviews with uh, some of the guys that he, uh, did you, or, or what did you, uh, well, tell me about that, uh, did, did people refuse to talk to you about him? Uh, well, one of the first cool creative meetings that that Cameron and I have again pinch me, you know, yeah. Cameron Crow and I have created me, <laughs> um, was that we 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 wanted to avoid cliche, and and that was kind of what I, the I, some of the ideas that I brought to him, you know, initially. But it's like let's just not do a parade of talking heads. That gets boring, and it also be turns turns into like he said, he said this person, that person, and so. We were, he, Cameron's like, you know, Crosby can tell, and, and we agreed. Let the man tell his story like he's writing a long lost letter to an old friend, you know, and, and just kind of come clean and go, you know, I messed, because he, he's owning it right now. He's owning his own mistakes. So, yeah, when it came to, the, to asking those guys, I mean, they're all upset with him first off. Yeah, and that's it, obvious. Yeah. yeah, and they're not, and I just, I think it would have turned into a sensational thing and it, it would have gotten. TMZ. Do you think they've seen it? Do you know if they've seen it? <clears throat> I know that 20, 30 percent of the group. Has seen it. You got to be more specific than that. <laughs> I, I'm not. I'm not. Yeah. <laughs> one out of five. <laughs> one out of five. One, one out of three out of. Uh, uh, yeah. CSN. Two two people refused to watch it. Oh, okay. So.
Yeah. Were you yeah. there when they watched it? No. Okay. Yeah. And did they? But did you get any feedback? I did, but it's that's for them to say. Okay. You know, right. I, 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 this is a good question, but I did get the feedback. But I also like, you know, they did have to cooperate because they let us use their music. Yeah. Oh, oh, you mean what? Would that have? Oh, that would have been a big problem. Right. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> so that in a way, they're they one person said, you know, I'm not interested in talking to him right now. But what I am interested because they respect Cameron and mm -hmm. they and I'm friends with them. But, what I am interested in is that just make sure it's honest. Yeah. Well, how about at the end when he kind of gives us that wink, you know, like, well, maybe I've just been bullshitting this whole time. I mean, you, that, I mean, you, and then you put it near the end. Yeah. So tell us why you did that. And well, what, what do you, what did you infer from that? He, Crosby is a paradox. He's always messing with people and still to this day. And I think that's just so symbolic of his personality. No, I don't think he had a grand plan to, to, coerce us into making this movie. I coerced him in, into making, to telling the story because I think that now is the time for him to tell a story. And Cameron also believed in that and believed in me and Crosby and so, but he, just like what he said at Laurel Canyon, oh, it's just where we got the groceries and then goes, it, and then proceeds to say how he, you know, hurt a lot of people. I think that's symbolic of, Cam, of Crosby, uh, what he, you know, yeah. Yeah, I'm just messing with you. <laughs> maybe I just conned you into it. Then maybe it was all a big clever plan. Yeah. And, but maybe there's some truth to that. Do you think there uh, there will ever be a reconciliation? I mean, what's your sense? Well, I read a couple of articles where they say that they hate the current administration so much oh. that they hate. They can find. They, they they hate that more than they hate each other. Oh, that's <laughs> a lot of hate. Yeah. And so perhaps that they could bond together. And, and another uh, Christmas tree lighting. Yeah. yeah. And uh, so that's one. I'm in Washington, D.C. I should probably be, you know. No, it's okay. Politics. I think anyone who comes to see okay. this film is, yeah. uh, yeah. you know, they're not exactly, you know, no, at the Trump Tower. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I think that they're, what I'm really happy with and what I'm proud of is that, like, music is kind of a hopeful thing. And you can't, Crosby's a paradoxical, he's like a human Rorschach's test. And he, you can't help but hear that piece of music that he wrote called Glory and hear that and just go, ah, I gotta call that guy, you know? And so he's apologized and, but I think that it's a cumulative thing over years and years of him, of them all being awful to each other. And you see that remorse in Graham Nash's face just breaks your yeah, heart. Yeah, it's a, I mean, there, it's, it's, it, it's really sad. Um, what was uh, Crosby's reaction to the film? Well, he loves it. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> he loves it's being not, on I mean, camera. It's not too long. It's not too. It's not long enough. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have a funny story about that. Uh, he, you asked <laughs> one of the first questions of like what his involvement was. He was cooperating. You know, that Jan and David, it was the first time that Jan, to my knowledge, has gone on camera for a movie. And, you know, they weren't really excited about talking. I mean, they've been approached dozens of times to, for, by people to do you know, films about them, and they just have turned it down. Talking about that stuff that they went through together, it's written in a book, and that, that was kind of like, yeah, it's written in a book, it's done, we're, we, it's behind us now. But a movie's a whole different thing. You're bringing a film crew into their home multiple times, it's not like, you know, it took uh, systematic, I had to get that shot, I need to get that shot. Mm -hmm. And so the day that we were shooting, I mean, Jan Crosby is, I mean, I think she's an angel. I think she's a saint. She's the reason why Crosby's alive. Um, so, you know, all along I was saying, you know, we really want you to be in this movie. And Cameron was saying the same thing. And the day that we <laughs> shot the, the interview with him on the couch where he says, mm -hmm. maybe I conned you into it. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, he's very comfortable in his home, and that was where we got some really great stuff. He says, I'm afraid to die. <clears throat> We're going, whoa, right? Jan locked herself in the bedroom with her dogs. She locked herself in the bedroom all day. And finally, it was getting darker, and she opens, the dogs come running out, and she's dressed nice, and her hair looks great. And I was like, Jan, and she goes, I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And, wow. And I said, Great. Okay, guys, let's get the, yeah. the, the, the moment. Yeah, the kitchen table here. Let's shoot you here, right there. We'll just get you all mic'd up and all that. And she 
said some very, very courageous things. I mean, it took a lot for her to say that. And that's why she said, I'm sorry to say that it was on camera, but, you know, because it's a culmination of, she knows, you know, life, time is the final currency. Um, but <clears throat> to go to answer your question about the, the, he kept calling me and saying, I better be seeing some footage. I better be seeing some <laughs> clips. And I was like, no, I'm not. And he really got upset with me. I mean, he has a temper. I think you can get that. No kidding. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, and he, he hung up on me a couple of times. And I was like, look, I'm not going to show you a scene of the movie. It's like me playing a chorus or a, a bridge of a song. I had to play the whole song. And he just, there was a silence on the phone. And he's like, I better see something soon. <laughs> Click. <laughs> so finally one day we, we, showed, we showed him what was ready to be the cut. And uh, you know we were ready, and, and Jan and David came down to LA, and we there's a screening room that's probably half this size, and they walked in, and he said, "How are you, buddy?" I said, "Great, I'm ready to show this." And we had the whole. You must have been nervous. We were all nervous. Yeah. <laughs> Lights came up just like this, sitting in chairs just like that, and he turned around and he looked at me. He goes, "I fucking love it." <laughs> <laughs> oh wow. So that was a real. Oh, like yeah. moment and I could hear Jen and Dave you know them laughing and crying during the whole process but then finally when he saw the movie at Sundance mm -hmm. that was like when he saw it with an audience and and Cameron and Crow and I have both been we looked at each other because that was the first point like I think with Crosby in front of an audience where he's been speechless and, and you there's film of it like that people took iPhone film that's like on YouTube and such where he's just it was an overwhelming, just, you know, beam of light and love and joy all together. So. Well, you did a great job. And um, I imagine, you know, and it's as much a film about an era as it is about yeah. about a person, which I think you just captured so incredibly, um, considering you did not live through it. Thank you. Know? you. <laughs> yeah. Some of us did, you well, know. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but I think I'll, I'll open it up to questions.